You're listening to the Listen Up Show, Startup Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Mitchell Chadro, your host. Today on show 048, we're here with Wendy Garfinkel Nissan and Eric Nissan. Don't let anybody convince you that, um, you know, you know, you're going to be Bill Gates or, or, you know, Zuckerberg, you know, because you, you know, you see the two out there and they're worth billing. It's hard work. It, most of us in the startup industry have to, um, work at it every single day, not to say those two didn't work at it, but, it, you know, and, and the results are not guaranteed. And so you need to believe in yourself. You need to constantly believe in what you're doing, uh, and you need to enjoy it. Listen up, trusted friends. It's your business. It's your family. It's your life. Now let's get started. Please sign up to my email list for the latest special offers exclusive for our Listen Up Show Startup Entrepreneur Podcast audience at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. I have been providing business advice, resources, and help to entrepreneurs for over 20 years, and I'm looking forward to helping all of you. Sign up for my email list again at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. I will provide you with full transcript for each interview, my ebook, 30 Tools to Start Up, the Startup Checklist, and many other education and training materials, all back at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. Now enjoy the show. Wendy and Eric, after careers on Wall Street, Eric as a technologist working for a $10 billion hedge fund, and Wendy working as a bond trader, they have co-founded a company called DIY.fund, which creatively enough is also their website. Hey guys, how are you doing from sunny Florida? Yes, it is sunny Florida. How are you doing? We're great, Mitchell. Thank you. Super. Well, you're actually a long ways away from Wall Street. Well, yes, our roots are um, from Wall Street. We both grew up in the New York area. Area. One too many uh, cold winters, and uh, here we are. Our startup round. For all your hosting needs, head on over to mitchellchadro.com slash hosting. mitchellchadro.com slash hosting for all your web hosting needs. Who do you use to host this website? That everybody wants to manage their portfolio like a hedge fund. And so now with fintech tools and resources, you could actually do it yourself. So you actually help people invest professionally using do-it-yourself tools. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's part of our personal journey. Um, we, you know, we noted that, you know, we invest ourselves. We tried all our lives to invest ourselves. And uh, the, the pain point we found as investors is that you go to your online broker, they're, you know, telling you to trade options and chart the markets and technical analysis and all this stuff that, um, you know, you talk to a professional investor, and I've worked at multi-billion dollar hedge funds um, building, I'm a technologist building these same type of systems. They're not doing any of those things. They have proper um, investment management systems. They manage their portfolios or their investments holistically. They can change parameters on it and have the whole, um, you know, flavor of their risk change. They understand their risk. All those terms and things I'm talking about are not delivered by your online broker um, and so we are essentially, um, we sit on top of your broker and we aggregate your data for you and we let you kind of invest in a more holistic uh, way. Instead of just listening to Jim Cramer tell you to buy, 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 you actually can look at your accounts and say, should I buy more Apple? How much risk do I have in technology? If I buy this, what, what should I sell to keep my accounts in balance? And, of course, on the flip side of that is, of course, he, he hits the button and he says, sell, sell, sell. So you have to know, you also have to know when to sell, of course, as well, which is the, which is the other side of the coin. For sure. How, when to buy, when to sell, correct, but also how much to buy and sell. You know, the, uh, ah, you know, yes. The, my accounts and you'd be like, oh, I think, uh, you know, X dollars seems like a good amount. Well, is it a good amount? I mean, there should be some pre-thought into how you're going to structure your investments before you just dive in there and decide to just put some cash out for an investment. I saw both of you on the, the red carpet. And this was actually the 2017 Benzaga Global FinTech Award. Tell me how you actually won that award and tell us, you know, give us a little bit of a behind the scenes in terms of what that was all about. It was actually really very exciting for us. I 
have to say we were um, one of 22 companies in our category for leveling the playing field. You know, we it's exactly what we're doing. We really thought we were perfectly suited for the category. But, I mean, there were very established companies in our category. One company had just gotten three or $400 million in funding. You know, when, when they say, you know, you're really happy to be a finalist, we were really happy to be a finalist. I mean, it was we were in very good hands and very good shoes to be in that category. And when they announced the very large company as the runner-up, I turned to Eric and said, so who do you think won? And, I mean, I will honestly admit I had my shoes off. <laughs> I was sitting there waiting. <laughs> That's great. Another company it was. And when they said our name, Eric was halfway up before I even, like, registered that they said us. It was crazy. It was very exciting. We were really honored. Um, we yeah, found, it was a yeah. great honor, you know, and, and all those little pieces help to validate what we're doing. But at the end of the day, the, you know, the hard work is building the business and and doing right for our users. And which we're going to certainly talk about in a little bit. Now, Eric, you, you had mentioned that you've built these portfolios and trading systems for multi-billion dollar hedge funds. And Wendy, you were actually trading bonds for the, for the big firms on Wall Street. So what, like one day the light bulb just kind of goes off and Wendy turns to you, Eric, and says, leave these six-figure jobs, our DIY dot fund? Not quite that easy, but I think part of our frustration was really, I mean, I was on, you know, the high yield and distress desks, which was like the, you know, the really meaty part of the bond world where we really had to understand companies and credits and at the end of the day you know we're screaming across the desk to each other what did you just buy what are you doing what are you doing and bonus time came around and I turned to my boss and said you know you know where do I even start investing and he said here gave me the name of a of a broker to go invest for me I mean we're doing this for a living and we still had no idea how to invest ourselves so what it came down to was that Eric and I were kind of struggling with how to they invested properly, and Eric started building these tools for just us personally, for our own account. Started with the spreadsheet. I would right. Started with the spreadsheet and just kept going, and I'd, he'd show me something. I'd say, I love it, but can I see this? And so he'd build it. I love it, but can I see this? And he'd keep building it. And then he, we kept building it, and he turned to me one day and said, there's really something here. There's a whole world of people who would love this tool, and that's how we got started. What actually makes your do-it-yourself investment platform different than anyone else's? So, I mean, and, and you know, the, the world is, you know, if I were to divide up the neat world of investment platforms, you have your online broker, um, which I think I alluded to in the beginning of the call. They have, um, you know, the ability to buy and sell stock chart. You know, you can do research on individual companies. And so the research piece and the actual trading piece and even the charting piece, we say that's fine. There's plenty of solutions out there for that. We're not reinventing those wheels. What we are allowing someone to do, oh, so then let me just take a step further. On the other side, you have, you know, these new players, these robo advisors, et cetera. And uh, what they do is say, hey, you know, investing is, you know, time-consuming hard. We'll just do it for you. Click a button and we'll just make sure but you're invested every month. At much lower fees, though, than traditional one or two percent. Right, or you can have, a, or you can have a wealth manager who just, you know, you pay a lot of money to, will do it for you. The net effect is, if you want to invest like a wealth manager or like the robos do, and rebalance your account and make sure that you're properly allocated, etc., you don't have an option out there. There are, are no tools that your broker will give you to allow you to do that. Your only choice is to give it to a robo or to, you know, spreadsheets and try to keep up with it, which can be very time consuming. So our platform is the tool that a, a professional advisor would have and use or a hedge fund might have and use. Obviously, there's a lot more complicated things that a hedge fund might do because of their situation and the amount of money they manage. But in general, the, the ability to manage account through software um, those that tool is now available to you through DIY. Sure. What? what? Yeah, Wendy. I'm sorry. You know, we really don't have true competition in that regard. I mean, doing exactly what we're doing. There are online. You know, you can do a lot of online research. You can do a lot of online trading. And we don't take your money. We are just a platform that sits on top of whatever you're already doing. And if you have, if you have your accounts in one place, or if you have accounts in 50 places, it can all be analyzed in one place together. So you truly know what your your risk, your volatility, and everything truly looks like in your portfolio. Let's talk a little. Bit bit about fees. That's one of the biggest effects of, of overall performance since they can tend to eat away at, at performance depending upon how high they are and it, uh, depending upon what type of funds, let's say, 
someone's investing in. I'm actually on your site right now, and I'm actually going to be typing in my email. It says to sign up for your beta test. In, in terms of your own resources and the tools that are right there that I normally would then pay for, are we saying that your site itself is actually free? How are you making money? Yes, yeah, so right now um, it is all entirely free. The goal is to have um, always some level of services that are free, and then um, on top of that, build in a premium service for people who want to have more tools or more features available to them. But as we're in beta right now and we're working with um, our user base and we're making sure that we're building features that they want, you know, all the the great um, comments and suggestions and questions we get from our users all go get baked back into the product. And so um, we're not charging for the use of that information back and forth. It's very collaborative. That's really why we're at this point right now. Let's go a little bit deeper into how the actual web platform itself is actually helping the average listener out there in our audience manage their own portfolio. How is it actually helping them understand their risk and, and actually tracking their performance? So, yeah, I mean, when you initially get on the site, it'll take you through a little wizard that'll ask a couple of questions. And what that wizard does is set up basic parameters in um, – in your account. For example, it might say, you know, the S&P 500, and I don't know the exact number today, but it's earning X dollars in dividends a year, you know, so let's, if you want to be aggressive, you should probably be, you know, a standard deviation or so under that. If you want to be more moderate portfolio, maybe you should be that or higher, et cetera. Different parameters, volatility, um, you know, different measures of your risk, et cetera. Um, then when you go in and you import in your account, so you link to your brokerage account, um, we take all those parameters and match it against your account so you can see how you're doing um, versus what you thought you should be doing according to your the questions you answered. From there, you have the ability to um, allocate your portfolio. So you can go in and say, well, I want to have these percents for these either um, – different uh, investment types or for these securities. And so we have a rebalancing tool that will go in there and, and alert you and say, hey, you're out of whack with what you want. We calculate and we will make it easy for you. So you click a button and essentially we lay it out for you to say this is what you need to do to get your account back in shape. The goal is not to have people have to stare at this every single day. The goal is to have us monitor your account for all these parameters and all these settings for you. And when action needs to happen, we let you know, and we let you know what the recommended course of, of fixing it is. One of the things we find with even professional wealth managers that you're paying a lot of money is that they'll say, okay, if, you know, if you've got a really active you know, wealth manager involved in your account, maybe they'll look at your account quarterly if you're really lucky, mostly annually if you're even luckier, you know. And they'll look to rebalance on a specific date. Rebalancing isn't date-driven. It's where your accounts are. So you may, over the course of the year, needed to rebalance 100 times, let's say, but you never rebalance because at, at that point, every year, you're at the same point. You never rebalance, so you truly miss out on the best-performing parts of your portfolio, which is when you're supposed to rebalance. We have, you know, tax loss harvester tools, things that, you know, if you went to any advisor today, they'd say, well, you've got to be tax loss harvesting. You've got to be... And so we're saying to the individual, this stuff isn't hard. You don't need a PhD in, you know, uh, finance or, you know, you don't need to um, have complex strategies. But we just want to make sure that your your accounts are doing the necessary things to keep it moving and you're earning the most out of it that you can. Our audience is prized of a, of a lot of not only startups and business owners and entrepreneurs that are taking their company to the next level. And from the audience's perspective, maybe let's delve a little bit into your actual numbers. How are you bringing people to your website from a marketing perspective? And if you could talk to us a little bit about the numbers right now in terms of how many active people are in your beta and what are you doing? What does your revenue model look like going forward in the next next six months to, to nine months to 12 months? Yeah, sure. Um, so as far as marketing goes, um, you know, we, you know, we certainly rely a lot on um, social media and, and the likes, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the awards and the, the different accolades that we've gotten certainly go into us. You know, we get certainly get a big boost of people who sign up and, and understand and learn about us. Podcasts like this are a great avenue for that as well because you get to explain 
exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, it's a lot of marketing is a lot of testing the borders and seeing what works and, and just as we do with the platform, we re, we rejiggle things and we, you know, focus on the things that work for us. Um, we came out of a accelerator here out in Orlando. Um, and so that, um, you know, we, we, we knew what we wanted to do. Um, it certainly though helped focus us on the customer experience and making sure that we're validating our ideas before we move forward. As far as users, um, I will say, um, you know, we have thousands of people who have signed up for the platform. Um, you know, we're, we're not a funded company. We're, we're, we're a private, privately held bootstrap, um, uh, startup. Um, in that we have some potential big deals that we are working with, um, that I cannot talk about, but, mm-hmm. but that should help us, um, better integrate with some of the online brokers and to do things more, um, in line with them. And those type of bigger deals would, you know, certainly like, you know, the, the thousands of people that we have registered, that would, that would, you know, kind of tip the scale in a, in an astronomical way. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really at the stage where we're being as fluid as possible because we have a lot of different avenues of growth and revenue. Um, but we, you know, we need to kind of lay out a, a, a solid course. You know, our goal is to remove the beta from the site so that people can just join and sign up and don't have to wait for that, uh, that, that wall in front of them. Now, you mentioned about validating your idea. You also mentioned about an incubator uh, there in Florida. I don't know if that's the starter studio that I was reading about as far as that goes, but maybe talk to the audience about, not just because you're in beta, but how you're actually, some additional ways that you're actually validating your idea to sort of take it to the next level because there's a lot of people in the audience that are obviously trying to validate their own ideas as well. Yeah. You know, when we first started, we said, ah, you know, I, I worked at a hedge fund, and this is what I need as an investor, so I'm just going to build it. And uh, the, the when you go into um, Accelerate, especially when we went into, they said, wait, hold everything. Before you spend your time building and just writing software, let's, you know, go out to the street, you know, walk around and ask people. And so, you know, part of our homework assignment was we would walk around and we would, you know, and then as we got comfortable with that process, we realized that, you know, there's even more ways ways to do this that we can grow. So we would do things automated through, you know, emails and questionnaires and et cetera. And by the time we were done, we had thousands plus of responses of, you know, questions and not to say that, you know, there's always bias in the questions and all that, but it's certainly if you're trying to figure out what's the right path, um, those things help. And those things, you know, probably saved us a ton of time because instead of building and spending efforts on features that are um, not necessarily we don't know if they would have been relevant, now we have a better idea of the relevancy of what works or not. So that was certainly like of all the things that we got out of the accelerator, I would think probably the the number one is the, the forced um, approach to developing it. What is your, your business model until you start charging some of the more premium types of features that you're going to add down the road? Are you going to create revenue from companies? So, I mean, we don't have a current, I, you know, like right now our focus is not on, you know, how do we build uh, the user? And that's kind of a longer term um, goal for us. As I said, we have some bigger um, deals that are, you know, in the works. and so. A lot of those things and the way that they pan out and work out will kind of affect how we shift. Um, you know, as I said, we always plan on having a free version of the platform. Uh, and, you know, even and then, even in, you know, the monthly premium fee, we're not talking about a percent of assets or anything, you know, you know, incredibly expensive. It would be in the, you know, $20 a month range you know, type of service for premium service. In terms of these partnerships, I know that you can't specifically mention exactly who they are, but maybe talk in very broad brushes in terms of what type of relationship this will be and how it will actually integrate to the product. We talk to our startups about the importance of sales and sort of networking, getting the word out there. And so I think it would be helpful from a creative perspective to let people know how you're continuing to build these partnerships and these ventures that are going to help the product evolve evolve over time. Yeah, so, you know, and, and that's a great point. You know, we, um, we, you know, we wake up every day saying, you know, how, 
who, who should we call today? And, you know, what is our next, you know, angle that we can get to the platform? You know, to that end, you know, we're not here to poo-poo any of the industry. You know, there, there's certainly needs and, and reasons for financial advisors. There's reasons for online brokers, for sure. Robo brokers, et cetera, they all have their place. Um, and we tend to feel because we are an open platform that we can talk to any one of those players and say, hey, we have a solution for you. We have something that works with you. And so to that end, um, you know, like an idea, um, you know, that, you know, you know, that we've, you know, certainly had plenty of conversations about with some of these online brokers is to say, hey, you know, let us handle portfolio management for you. Let's show your customers a better way to do this. And the reception to that has been really, really strong. Um, for financial advisors, the, the, the conversations have been, look, you know, you can still manage your client's accounts, but why not do it in a way with complete transparency and so that you're both seeing the same screen and doing, you know, operating on the portfolio in the same way instead of you, you know, behind a veiled wall um, you know, we, we know that from people we've talked to, you know, kind of some of the major pain points of their advisors is, you know, lack of information and knowing, you know, what are they doing, why are they doing it. And, and even if things go bad on a portfolio, as long as you knew what was happening, you could have saved a lot of headache with your clients. And conversely, from the wealth manager's perspective, they feel like they are fielding phone calls that take hours and hours that are not adding any value to someone's portfolio. And they're basically about simple questions of why you did this and why you did that. So if you set up your account, set your risk parameters, set your balance allocation, and all of a sudden, you know, you set your threshold and it goes, okay, it's above the 3% threshold, it's time to sell, it's time to buy, you knew exactly why your wealth manager was making those trades in your account, that would prevent a phone call from happening. So it works for both sides of the equation, both the, in, the individual and the professional. And so I think the question goes to being a startup. And at a, as a startup, you know, when you're a mature company and you have, you know where your revenue specifically comes in from and you know where your bread and butter is, you know, that, that turns into that innovator's dilemma where it's hard to change on a dime and, and you know, kind of um, upset your current customers. But when you're a startup, the benefit you have is, um, because you don't have the, the paying customers per se, you have the ability to, to try all different sorts of waters, and that's the, certainly a conversation and, and thoughts that go in, in through our head. I think that that's terrific insight for those who are out in the audience who obviously have their own startup and can easily pivot to reevaluate what's working for them and what's not working for them. So in terms of, Wendy, in terms of personal finance and educating your consumer, who are you finding then out of these thousands of beta testers is your typical average customer? It's so interesting because usually, you know, especially in a startup, everyone tries to get you to give them your target audience, an age range, you know, male or female. And what I finally have determined is our user base is someone with the attitude and the propensity to want to do it themselves. So we'll get everyone from you know, experienced investors to first timers. It's anyone who says, I can do this myself. I don't need to pay somebody. I want to check on my advisor. We really are focusing on that person with the attitude of doing it themselves. I had mentioned earlier that I was actually on your site and, and signing up myself because even though I might have a, a lot of years of experience as a uh, as investment counsel and, and working with fiduciaries, I think that these resources and tools can benefit not only the novice but even the more experienced person. And, and as I'm looking at some of the, the steps on your site, I, I see maybe like six easy and simple straightforward steps like design a portfolio set your investment goals, monitor the portfolio, talk to us a little bit about what is risk. To me, that not only your your do it yourself, but it could also be a tool for professionals. Is that would you say that, that that's your site in a nutshell? Yes, I mean that's what I said. I did this for a living and had no idea where to get started. I mean that's how crazy it is. You can be experienced with investing but not truly know how to properly invest for yourself. And I think that's what the message we're trying to make sure people understand. It's like you may know how to execute trades, you may not. You may know how to, you know, buy and sell options, but do you really know how to manage your portfolio? Do you really understand how risky you truly are? Do you really understand all of those mutual funds and ETFs you own? You know, they probably all own, you know, Apple and Google and Microsoft, and you probably own those stocks individually. So do you really know what your true exposure is in those 
sectors. Right, but our goal is not to information overload you. We're not, you know, expecting you to know it. We're just saying we're going to monitor it for you and, and make you aware and help you adjust. What type of good investment advice, big picture, would you offer the audience? Yeah, it's not a, I'm not an investment advisor, so I certainly want to, you know, cap it with that. You know, I've seen through my own portfolios and things that I've done and, you know, I, and the nice thing is now that I've seen and I've managed my portfolios holistically, you know, I used to, I used to worry, right? Like my, I would have a stock that went down and you stare at it and you'd not want to look at it. And we've all done that, that type of thing. And now that I've um, kind of grouped my investments into different strategies for myself, I know that I'm going to have some strategies that are going to underperform during certain periods of time. And I'm going to have other strategies that will outperform during certain periods of time. And it is now knowing that and seeing the ebb and flow, um, it, it just turns out that my best portfolio this year was my worst portfolio last year. Um, hmm. So, you know, I, it's helped me understand how you do stay calm when things are going down because I'm not looking at individual stocks and saying, well, well I lost X dollars in this and, you know, that, that really um, doesn't feel right. But I'm looking at it holistically and saying, okay, well, I'm comparing myself to how the overall markets are doing. I know that I have um, things that are underperforming. How can I, is there things I can do to adjust them? Do I leave it? And uh, I know over time those things will all work out. So really going through this process myself and doing it myself has been enlightening just to my own personal investments. Um, you know, it, you know, we always hear the adage when you're talking to people just, you know, don't panic when things are falling. But um, unless you've been through it and do it yourself, and that's part of also why we, you know, think that this is important for people to do, you're going to panic. So you need to go through it and understand how these numbers work and how the markets kind of work and change. Uh, it, it really has uh, been extremely helpful to me personally. I also think that individuals really feel, I mean, as smart and as educated as most of the world is, everyone feels like I'm not smart enough to do this myself. I don't know how to invest. I don't know anything about investing. And really, honestly, even professionals just have some kind of system like what we're using in front of them. There, there's no secret sauce. There's really no, you know, crazy, you know, easy answer. It, it, you just kind of have to get your feet wet and get in and realize it's simply right in front of you and just start monitoring it. That's, I mean, before you even start trading, just start monitoring. You know, it's interesting. People have a lot of fears. We talk about fears of investing or how do I buy or can I buy or am I going to be smart enough to do it? And it's those same types of fears that I hear over and over and over again that startups will say before deciding to, let's say, leave, you know, a six-figure position and start their own company, take the next step in sort of continuing to build out their business. And so I see a lot of parallels there. And that's why, Wendy, I had asked you about, you know, financial education for those who are, let's say, for example, first-time investors. I know you had mentioned that there's a lot of research out there that's on the web, and so that's why I wanted to see how you're actually empowering those first-time investors with financial education, because I know I'm really big on that. We've had you know people on to talk to us about financial education, and I know that's big here in my own household with my girls. I know you have two boys, and so what do you do to teach the younger generation about investment and get them more comfortable so they don't have these continued fears. You know, the, one of the big things we know is that education is key to our platform, and the more education we have. Right now, we do have a website with a lot of, you know, probably more detailed articles, but that is a big, you know, another tranche of our business we really want to grow. We really want to get this down to, you know, even in the schools, we feel like it is paramount. You know, you learn so much about every different subject, but you really, truly, I went to Wharton, you know, I went, I have a finance degree, and you didn't really even learn Great portfolio management even there necessarily, besides maybe one class if you took it. So we would love to have education be a, a big portion of our business. It's just, like I said, we're a startup, and that's, you know, probably phase two or three. But it is Sure, no, I and, and I think we really appreciate that because as people are listening to your own story and what you're going through with your own startup, they're thinking about it from their own perspective in terms of the type of businesses that they're trying to start up and it's giving them creative ideas and, and marketing and sales ideas from, from their own industry and from their own businesses that they have as they continue to listen. Our fast pitch, MitchellChadro.com slash books for books, audio books, guest recommendations, and the books that I read to start up each day. Sponsors are Fast Pitch, my book club recommendations, back at mitchellchadro.com slash books. 
To see more of my recommendations and recommendations of our guests, just go to mitchellchadrow.com slash books. It's your number one resource for book reviews and recommendations. Can you recommend an investment book or a business book that both of you have found to be in the investment industry or the business industry, but a book that you continue to go back to? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know that I, you know, necessarily have time anymore to go back to books, per se, but um, <laughs> that's the whole of uh, random walk down Wall Street type type of book were, um, you know, pretty, um, you know, interesting to, you know, when you realize that there is a randomness and trying to make sense of it, um, you know, I, I think, um, you and know. Then, and Lean Startup, if you're a startup company, I was just speaking with someone who was on his second startup and he was talking about how his first one has had gone well, but he started the second one and it's going so well. And he goes, do you know the book, The Lean Startup? And that was week one of our of our accelerators. We actually had the co-author, you know, run through, went through an entire program. So that we're based, our entire business model is based on that. And I think if you're a startup, that's a great, great place to start. Not only have we talked about that book right here on the podcast, there have been other guests who have obviously mentioned it, which lets you know that when you hear a name over and over and over again, it's more than just coincidental. It's because it really truly is a timeless book. And we will definitely link up to that resource. And for people who need the show notes, they can always go back to mitchellchadrow.com slash show 048 and anything and everything that we've talked about today, including how we're going to stay in contact with you, they'll be able to get back at that website URL for the, for the show notes. We also talk about various apps. I don't know if at some point you're going to create your own a fintech app in conjunction to the website, but talk to us a little bit about that and if you can recommend an app that you use in, in business, family, or life that you can recommend to the audience, I think that would be terrific as well. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, we um, we are actually in development of uh, of an app for your phone. Um, it looks really good. <laughs> DIY. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Eric and Wendy, when, when you guys have that, happy to have you back on so that we can talk about that. I actually just started a, a niche site called App Martyr, and we've actually had app developers on our show, so I'm sure the audience would really be very interested in finding out how you continue to develop not only your tools and resources, but how you're taking that business to the next level. Sure, yeah. I mean, and the great thing is, you know, nowadays you can develop a cross-platform app, and so we are um, utilizing some of those technologies so we can write it once and run it in multiple places. Um, the, The app is meant to not be the full suite of tools on DIY.fun, the website. Um, it's meant to be what's, um, what, what is usable, useful in an app form and some of the um, alerting and performance and reporting and stuff like that that you can get at your fingertips so you, um, if you ever get curious of how you're doing or what needs to happen in your account, you can do it at a glance. Um, as far as uh, other apps that we use, you know, I, uh, um, hmm, good question. Do you have any any preferred apps that you use? I use the um, I use the net worth calculator on Personal Capital, which is a robo broker, um, but it aggregates all of our accounts, and you know I like seeing you know I can get a sense of what's happening with our account as as obviously as markets move in a day, it'll re, it'll reprice our investment accounts but also take into account all of our other assets, and I'll look at that on a daily basis. Who, who actually hosts your website? Oh, yeah, we're up on Amazon, Amazon's cloud. Our wrap-up round, mitchellchadrow.com slash photos for all your graphic design needs. Um, how can how can people stay in contact with, with you, Wendy and Eric? Uh, our email. I'm Eric, E-R-I-C, at DIY.fund, F-U-N-D, and Wendy is... Uh, Wendy at DIY.fund. Wendy at DIY.fund, right? And, and I see here your, your blog, because we, we, we started talking about some of the education and articles, blog.diy.fund, so... Yeah, no, that that's great. Can you can you leave the audience with three main takeaways that they can get that you'd like them to leave this interview with? Sure. Um, first of all, well, before I do that, thank you for the time on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Really, thank you. Oh no, it, it's been it's been more than a pleasure. I'm, I'm was really excited to to have both of you on to talk about not only your startup but tool that that you've that you've created that is really helping the investment industry and those who are not only just starting out with investment but people 
people who are also professionals as well. I think that that's that's terrific. And so for your three main takeaways? Yes, I would start off with from the investing side. um, You know, regardless of what you do, I think you need to understand what it means to invest and how things work. Whether someone's managing your money for you or you're doing it on your own, you have your own strategy, but you need to understand how it works. Otherwise, you're just not going to end up with results or with Um, you know, situations for yourself down the road that are to your liking because you didn't have an understanding of the fundamentals of what you were getting involved in. So um, no matter where you do it or how you do it, I I, I strongly urge everyone to do that. From the startup side, you know, I think that – you know, the ability to, as a, as a young startup, to adapt is critical and to always think, you know, what, what else can I be doing? Um, that, that's just an ongoing um, exercise for us. And to add to that, the really, the most important is the... Number three. Wendy, you know I wasn't going to forget you. The third point is really important is that you may think everyone wants, you know, one, two, three, four, five, but realistically they want A, B, C, D, E. And I think you really have to listen to your audience and get that customer feedback continuously throughout the process as you're starting up. And that's really important that you build what your customer wants, not what you want. Well, Wendy Garfinkel Nissan and Eric Nissan, this has been awesome. We really really want to thank you very much for joining us here on the Listen Up Show Startup Entrepreneur Podcast. And as soon as you have that app out, we certainly want to have you back. Again, thank you so much, and you take care now. Hey, thank Thank you you. again. In closing, let me ask for my listeners' help. First, please subscribe to my email list at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. You will get all the full interview transcripts, my ebook, 30 Tools to Start Up, where I talk about these free resources in show 006. You'll get the startup checklist, education and training materials, and other resources just by signing up at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. Listen up, trusted friends. It's your business. It's your family. It's your life. Go out and live it. Back at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up, help me boost the rankings of the Listen Up Show, the Startup Entrepreneur Podcast, by providing a well-written review in iTunes. mitchellchadro.com slash iTunes. It helps other people find the show. If you actually need instructions on how to do this, you can find that back at mitchellchadro.com slash sign up. Thank you so much for subscribing to my email list and providing a written review on iTunes. Until next time.